Welcome once again. Right now we're in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. How to live in the Spirit. Paul says, but I say, walk by the Spirit. Wait a second. Didn't Paul just speak against works, speak against, you know, going by the law or any kind of rules? Didn't he just say, you know, it's not by works, you know? Didn't he say just live by the Spirit? But here he says, walk by the Spirit. It's a command. It's something that you do. Walk by the Spirit. And you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. Ah, oh, Paul is pulling in the law here. He is pulling in the law of God. Because to fully obey the law of God, you must deny yourself. You must deny the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. That you may not do the things that you desire. It's about denying yourself. Verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Hmm. Now it sounds a little bit confusing. Didn't you just say that we're supposed to walk according to the spirit? That's actually doing something. That's actually, you know, something to obey. That's something to fulfill. Okay. Then you said we're not under the law. What do you mean by that? What law? Now the deeds or the works of the flesh are obvious, which are adultery, sexual immorality, uncleanness, lustfulness, idolatry. That's a big one. There is a lot of idolatry in the world today, even in so-called Christian nations, especially in so-called Christian nations. Idolizing self, idolizing money, idolizing peers, idolizing things, idolizing celebrities, idolizing politicians, sorcery. In the original Greek manuscripts, pharmakia, which literally means drugs, hatred, strife, jealousies, outbursts of anger, rivalries, divisions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. That's opening up a big one, isn't it? Anything like these that I just mentioned, of which I forewarn you, even as I also forewarned you. Paul said it more than once here that those who practice such things will not inherit God's kingdom. Big N-O-T there, not inherit God's kingdom. Let me make it very simple for you. That means no future in heaven. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. That's a big one, self-control. That means eating, sexual immorality, all kinds of stuff like that is controlled. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. Huge point there. If you truly belong to Jesus, you have, past tense, you have crucified the sinful nature, the flesh, with its passions and its lusts. Verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let's also walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Let's not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Here's the thing. A lot of people believe that, you know, we don't have to go by the law anymore, that Paul said it's not by the works of the law, you know, it's by faith through grace and all this kind of stuff. But here, Paul says very, very clearly, Verse 19, verse 20, and verse 21 says, if you do any of these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's no heaven for you. There is a law. He lists a whole bunch of things, and he said anything like this, which means there is law to go by. And guess where he got that law from? It is called Torah. It is the law of God. He got that straight out of Torah. So he says, you need to obey. You need to listen to God. You need to comply with the law of God. It's not about going through the motions. It is about self-denial. It is about self-sacrifice. It's not so much about what you do. It's about what you don't do. And don't forget, take this in context. 
check out the video taking Paul's letters in context, Paul and the Nazarite vow. That puts it all into perspective. What did Paul actually mean here? What does he actually mean when he speaks about faith versus works? Also check out Gentiles enter Torah and also check out the teachings on Acts chapter 21. That brings it all into perspective because you see Paul was accused of telling people that they don't have to obey Torah anymore. But Paul made it very clear that is not what he meant. And after that confrontation in Acts chapter 21, Paul certainly changed his style of delivery, if not totally changing the tune itself. Until next time, seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.